Yeah, so this is a little 12-acre block on a larger unit near Mabel, Oregon. And in this scene right here, I'm, I'm opening that up. It was a pie-shaped piece, ran downhill to a point. So I'm throwing these bundles down the hill, opening it up. And you can kind of see there's a little bit of a draw there too. So I got everything I could, packed it up, threw it downhill. And then some of the stuff down there at the bottom, I went down and threw it up the hill in that draw so, so as to save it out well. After I got that done, I pretty much had a face and why I went. So yeah, I worked my way back up. Had a buffer line on the left-hand side looking down the hill. I'm working above that here. It's kind of funny, you can see some stumps down there below. You know, the unit dropped down pretty sharply into that buffer line. And uh, there were a couple trees I knew were going to be kind of out of reach. And one of them was a one tree too far. I actually, uh, I went after it. I, I got it on the ground, but I, I slid and uh, slid down to above the buffer line. I'd looked at it before, so I was willing to take a chance on it. Because there was an old cat road, if things really got bad and I couldn't get out, I could have fought my way down and probably gotten out that way. But as it worked, I was able to scratch and claw my way up the hill and the way I went. That was really the worst piece, uh, or the worst little dab there on the whole unit in general. It was really nice ground. This little draw here, as the buffer line continued up the hill, that was the worst of it. Everything else was pretty much in reach. It was really nice wood and nice ground too. But, uh, I got pretty good production on it. Wood was running about two and a half logs. It was good size. It was fun cutting. Up here now where this is showing, I'd reached that point where basically the, the block was pretty well established. I had my face going and uh, I was just able to cut basically side to side without any problems. I didn't have to worry about throwing wood into a hole or working around a jog and the unit boundary or anything. It was just pretty much flat out cutting. Right here, I'm making a pass down to the south, and that that draw that was buffered is behind me. I think I'm right there at the transition from where the buffered area ends, and the draw becomes less pronounced. It was still there, though. So as I think I said before, I you know. The, at the end of my strip on a face, what I'll try to do is uh, just reverse course and then just kind of ease my way over back into the face again. And in a difficult spot, like, you know, where you're dropping down in this little draw to clean it up like I'm doing here, that's even more important. You know, and it just makes it so much easier if you if you transition gradually and um, you don't try to turn hard or, or in this case down this draw, you know, you try if you tried to go side hill over and then turn again into the you know your swath and the way you'd go, you're making you know a couple turns in a draw that you want to minimize ground disturbance. And, any kind of abrupt turn and 
poor conditions, you yeah, stand a pretty good chance of uh, you know, getting hung up or even getting stuck. So by just easing over back into your face and then back up or you know, go, go forward depending on how you, you go on to you know, pick up all the wood in that swath and then reverse course yet again and take off the way you want to go. You, you really minimize ground disturbance and wear and tear on the machine. Just more efficient, more productive. Yeah, this, this unit was, it was nice ground, as you can see, nice wood. But there definitely were humps and bumps, little ridges and draws and depressions and whatnot. Every unit has them. I'm kind of working around a few of those in these next few scenes here. And there are a couple tricks I, I use that make, make it uh, easier and quicker more efficient for me to, to save wood out effectively. You know, this stand I think was pct It was old Roseburg land, so they did a lot of that good forestry back in the day. So the stem count was relatively low, but the piece size was, was good. So the end result of that was that the bundle size was quite reasonable. So I would, a lot of this wood I'm trying to lay, you know, in line with the bundles, you know, from my previous swath. By lining those up and falling on them, you know, in line with them, um, that's a really effective way of, you know, saving out your delicate tops. You know, they fall into that bundle. And, that cushions them, cushions the blow, reduces breakage. And another thing I, I use, I think I'm going to do it right here too, is uh, you know, sometimes you can what I'd call throw a tree. And uh, of course, that's easier when you're throwing it downhill, but you can throw it uphill too. That little flick of the head when you're releasing can give your tree a, you know, a forward motion. And what I'm doing right here is I throw that onto that lower bundle. It kind of bridges that. There was kind of a depression there. And I found that that, that kind of sliding motion that you put on the tree that way can help reduce the impact of falling. It's kind of, it's not, a, you know, it's not a real hard impact. It's a kind of a glancing blow. It's sliding along the ground, and uh, that that helps you know, to reduce breakage. I think uh, being conscious of breakage and doing everything you can to improve recovery and reduce breakage is that's just a critical responsibility of a, running a buncher um, you know when you're cutting 200 stems or more an hour you know that's a lot of stumps you're making you know so if you're making high stumps you know I mean that really adds up into a lot of scale at the end of the day of course the same is true if you're you know if you uh, if you're breaking a lot of wood um, that really, uh, you know, it, it's it's just lost, pure and simple. And it's really something to be avoided as best you can. And some wood and some ground, I mean, it's almost impossible not to break something. It, it really is. It, uh, you, you're cutting trees down, laying them on the ground, you know, and there's going to be some breakage. But, you know, working in a manner that you're doing everything you possibly can to reduce that that waste is very important, I think. And there are a lot of good, you know, techniques, little tricks like these that uh, really uh, can help that make it quick, and, uh, easy to get good recovery.
I think really the falling on top of bundles is uh, that's kind of the one of the want tools that I use like you know almost every day. It just uh, just helps um, light a wood on top of wood. see here I'm making a smaller bundle using that, that earlier bunch and throwing a few trees on top of that a smaller bundle because that was a nice uh, nice lay for me and now as I'm climbing up on that ridge it's a little bit you know you'll see when I drop this one down it's uh, a little bit less favorable Certainly larger block sizes are, I think, very helpful in terms of uh, good recovery um, from a cutting standpoint because there are less uh, lead changes and less transitions into landings and whatnot, and you have more room to do that. I'm always curious as to what other operators think, but I think that you can change lead maybe 15 degrees and use existing bundles to do it without having troubles but if you go higher than that i think you start seeing breakage But yeah, it sure was nice. Like I said, this one was 12 acres, a little bit more than 12 acres. And yeah, here's my second morning. Uh, it just sure is nice to, to open a unit up, cut on it hard for the day. Then you've got, I've got my face established. I've got my lead established. And so the second morning, can just fire it up, hit the lights, walk in on my trail, hit my face, and go right to cutting. It's very productive. You know, these small blocks are a lot of opening up and not much cutting in general. So I really appreciate it. And this one being, you know, 12 acres, I, I think I, I got it a little, a little under a day and a half of cutting. It was, uh, it was good production. Yeah, in places on this block, there was uh, quite a considerable amount of blow down. It, um, there were some places that were, it was wet, and I think it was also uh, that ice storm from a few years back had kind of come through it. So I like that stick, I just, moved ahead there you know i'll pick that up and get that in a bundle one thing a lot of people aren't really aware of is that as long as a stem has bark on it they've got to scale it as log so i do everything i can to pick up salvage and get it in a bunch if it makes the landing well so much the better for it. it's a little bonus It's easier than climbing over it the machine to Yeah, this is my favorite time of day what you're seeing right here, coming from the dark, full dark in the morning and then a little bit of light starts breaking through and 
things start taking on definition outside the envelope of your lights. Yeah, I really enjoy it. It's part of the morning. Yeah, so there you have it. Some more cutting for you from Oregon, Pacific Northwest. So as always, I hope you enjoy it. And we appreciate you watching.